Really quick video. I got a question from Tofu Cube here asking about museums. So taxidermy in museums and animals being put into museums. So one of the differences to me and Gary Francione, Francione is actually more extreme than I am in, in at least one respect, maybe in several respects. But you know, Francione thinks that um, animals that cannot survive in the wild should go completely extinct, should disappear from the planet. Um, so actually, just saying, being honest, that would not only mean that domesticated animals go extinct and disappear. It would also mean that wild animals that can no longer exist in the wild without human help would disappear. So I disagree with that. Um, I think that there is a, an important category of animals that should in the future continue to exist in basically museum-like facilities, not a zoo in the current sense of the term, but, you know, in Canada, we already have this to some extent. The reality is that our uh, native buffalo, the real buffalo, uh, the un unalloyed pure buffalo species that was once there were millions of in Canada and are now almost extinct, they exist on one island. There is one island in a river in Canada that still has buffalo, and they are basically maintained there by the government. It's not a zoo. They get to walk around the island freely, but the government, you know, is uh, guarding it at all times. Uh, one of the reasons being, by the way, that uh, buffalo, they, they carry tuberculosis. So they have to be quite carefully um, prevented from mixing with human beings who could possibly transmit tuberculosis to them. And there is one national park in the United States that still has real buffalo. Uh, I don't know how big the herd is. You can Google it, I'm sure. So there's one park in America and one park in Canada that's an island, a small island, where there are still buffalo. And that is the only thing preventing them from disappearing from the world, right? So it's not a zoo. It's not, you know, something else. Now, in that same way, I do think that, you know, there are, you know, if you were actually talking about, this would be like 300 years in the future, talking about the ultimate future uh, in a vegan utopia or something. I do think that in the same way we can maintain small permanent populations of different types of domesticated animals from human history so they don't disappear, um, but also where they're not being exploited. You know, I don't think... I, you know, I remember a lot of these specialized breeds. You know, the Scottish Terrier, the various forms of Terrier dog in Scotland, they were created to kill rats. Um, the dog we had when I was a child, it was born and bred to herd sheep. It had sheep herding instincts. And amazingly, I got to witness that. You know, you let this dog near a bunch of sheep. Nobody had ever trained it, and it still knew how to herd sheep, bred into its DNA, apparently. Amazing, you know, behavioral adaptation. Now, those, you know, in a vegan future, those uses for domesticated animals don't exist. Already today, they don't really exist. This is not the way, you know, traditional agriculture has disappeared, the traditional functions for these domesticated animals. But no, I think there's no reason to... Um, argue, as Francione does, that all of these species just have to disappear from planet Earth. Again, I'm Canadian. Canada has empty territory. We really do, and it's getting emptier. It's not getting fuller, folks. And even Japan. Japan has a lot of empty territory, and it's getting emptier. I'm not joking. You can look at real reports. The Japanese countryside, they have a lot of empty land. So you're saying you can't have a parcel of land for some Scottish terriers to exist on, let them breed and run, you know, in a managed, again, wildlife management. This is not absolute wilderness. It's also not, you know, domestication. Put up some, you know, <laughs> you know this is not unattainable um, for basically any of any of those species. So I just mentioned it's, it's a small technical question, but actually I do think museums are an interesting example of that. Um, you know, as a pattern of keeping animals alive that would not survive in the wild, either because the, the, the breed is created through unnatural human intervention or because human beings have changed the world so much that they are a wild species, but they can no longer survive in the wild, which is the case for, um, which is the, case for the bison, also known as the buffalo, in the, the wilderness of Canada, what remains of the wilderness of Canada.